Hello and welcome back to the channel for another lesson. Um, in today's lesson, I'll be looking at uh, year three and four curriculum. This is the first one of these lessons and it's to help your child get ahead with their maths and to try and stay ahead as the school year goes along. So these videos are designed as a pre-teach for um, your child based on what they're going to be learning when they go back to school. So it's likely that what they'll look at um, first is place value within maths. And I've grouped year three and four together because the curriculums are very similar. But essentially the idea is the end point for year three and four is that they understand to recognize and partition and numbers up to thousands. So today that's our objective. We're gonna look at numbers up to a thousand, recognize numbers uh, up to hundreds, tens and ones, and then recognize numbers up to a thousand. So first of all, um, it's likely that your child will look at something like this. this is called a place value chart, and it helps the children to understand the values of the digits in each of the numbers. So if a number has three digits, two, five, and six, then we know that the two would represent the hundreds, the five would represent the tens, and the six would represent the ones. And then moving up then into year four, um, it's easy to remember what kinds of numbers the children should be learning about because year three learn about three digit numbers and year four learn about four digit numbers or up to four digit numbers. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good practice to try and teach year threes up to four digits because they're well capable of understanding it. Um, so here we have thousands. This one has got four digits. So we've got thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. So we've got one in the thousands column, two in the hundreds column, four in the tens column. And we still need to include zero here as a placeholder to show there are zero ones. So as I work through this video, I'm going to try to help um, you understand this a little bit more. OK, so um, essentially what they'll begin with in school is looking at numbers uh, and different representations of those numbers, because um, it's, it's likely that they'll start with concrete. So they'll count. Um, they'll have something in class that they can use to count with. And then they'll move on to pictures. And as you can see here, we're using a picture of something the children might be familiar with. So marbles and they're in boxes. So we've got three boxes of hundreds. And we've got four boxes of tens and they've got two separate marbles. So how many marbles are there? So we're asking the children here to count in hundreds, tens and then ones. So we've got 100. We've got 200. We've got 300 here. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40 here. So four tens and we've got two ones. Now, if we um, put this number back together, we are going to have a three in the hundreds column to represent those three hundreds. We're going to have a four in the tens column representing those 40. And we're going to have two in the ones column. So this number then would be 342, 342 marbles. Um, and then you'll look at lots of different representations. So here we've got bags of balloons. Again, something the children might be familiar with. And we've got bags of hundreds. So we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got 400 here. And we've got two bags of 10, so that's 10 and 20. And then if we put those two parts together, it would be 420. Again, writing it in the place value chart would be four in the hundreds, two in the tens column and zero ones on this occasion. And finally, we've got here, this time they've mixed the bags up, so they've just made it slightly harder by not putting the hundreds together and then the tens. But we can see here that we've got two hundreds so that would be 200 balloons. And then we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we've got 50, okay, with five groups of 10. And if we put that together, we should have 250 balloons altogether. Two in the hundreds column, five in the tens column, and zero in the ones column. So let's move on. OK, so then the children um, should move on to this representation, which is the one that they'll become most familiar with as they move throughout school. And this resource is called Deans. And the, what Deans do is they help the children to visualize what hundreds look like. Um, so here you can clearly see that each one of these small square cubes, sorry, represents a, a one. So here we've got six ones. Then when we put them into groups of 10, we represent them as a line here. So we've got three groups of 10 and then you have a hundred of those which look like this, this square here of a hundred of those small um, cubes. 
And what this is showing the children exactly what that number would look like. So rather than it being very abstract with just digits, um, it's giving them a visual representation on which to hang their understanding. So here we've got 100, 200. So you've got 200 there. You've got three tens, which make up 30. And then you've got six ones. Now we know what each of those different parts are. We can put this number back together and the answer would therefore be 236, 236. Have a go at these next two by yourself. Pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so what did you get? So here we've got one, two, three, four, five hundreds. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven ones. Now notice there are no tens on this occasion. So if we were using the place value chart, we would put the five in the hundreds column. We would have zero in the tens column. We couldn't leave it blank. Okay, we'd need to have a, a zero to place hold there. And then you'd have seven in the ones column. So that number there is 507. This time we have three hundreds. So that's going to be 100, 200 and 300. And we've got two tens, 10 and 20. But this time we have zero ones. So when writing this number, I would have a three in the hundred column. I would have two in the tens column and I'd put a zero as a placeholder for my ones. So then the children would move on from year three to year four and they'd have a new visual representation. And on this occasion, um, what do you think this is showing you? So it looks similar to hundreds. You've got 100 there, but it looks like they're stacked backwards. And if I tell you there are 10 of these, so it's 10 times 100. So that's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. So each one of these big cuboids is a thousand ones. And that helps to show what a thousand, helps to show the children what a thousand looks like as a visual representation. So what numbers are represented? Well, if that's a thousand, this is a thousand, and this is also a thousand ones, that gives us a total of 3,000. We put the comma in to separate those numbers. So have a go at the B then, what, what numbers is shown here? And um, you need to count all of them. So this whole group here, how many thousands do you have in that group? Pause the video, have a go. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 was the correct answer. How did you get on? Did you get it? So um, another question for you to have a go at. It says this time we're given blocks of thousands. Okay, so these are all thousands, but it's just saying in this question to circle 9,000. Um, now, some of you who are out there might just think, oh, I'll just circle nine of them. Yep, yeah, that is correct. But you need to understand you're not circling nine, you are circling 9,000. So if we do circle 9,000, let's circle them as a big group. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And given that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's 10,000 altogether. We only want to circle nine of those. So that would be the correct answer. So finally, um, I'm going to move on now to another thing that the children will learn in year three and four, um, different representation. So they also need to understand that um, numbers can re be represented differently. So in the same way we used marbles, balloons and deans, we can also use counters. And these are two examples of how you can do that. So here we're given a series of counters and we need to work out what number it's showing. So we've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 410, 420. 421, 422, 423, 24, 25. So there's 425 there in total. And it's asking us to partition it into the different parts. So I'm going to do the hundreds first. So it gives me four hundreds. How many tens have we got? We've got two tens, which make 20. And then we've got five ones. So that's how we would partition that three digit number using the counters as a representation. And here we've got the counters again, but this time shown in a place value chart. So it's asking us to partition it again. So 631 would be 600, 30, and 1. That's just a different way of the children understanding and being able to show these different three and four digit numbers. 
Again, two different more representations. These are called part, part, whole models. This one is similar to the one we've just done. So 221 will be 200 plus 20 plus one. But this one is just shown differently and the children need to be able to see numbers in all different kinds of ways and representations because this, what this does is it deepens their understanding rather than just learning about the numbers um, going all the way up to millions straight away. We want to really deepen their understanding of three digit numbers. So here we've got 221 and we can partition it to, into 220 and one. But also, it doesn't have to be partitioned that way. I've just chosen to do hundreds, tens, and ones. You could, what do you wanted to, and this is where the mastery comes in, you could do 120, okay? You could do one over here, and you could do 100 over here. And it's just showing the children that um, they can part a number into different parts in lots of different ways, and that's the depth of understanding that you really want from your children. Okay, so just to give you a quick one, I know year three and four is quite away from SATs, but they are working in the key stage two curriculum and they are essentially working towards that final assessment in year six. And this is an example of a SATs question that they'll answer when they are in year six. So you can see how this builds up to this point. So we've got 6,000 plus 90 and in the box here, if we put those two parts together, it's the correct answer is 6,090. So that's how they would apply it to SATS questions, These this learning that they're doing in three and four. Uh, finally, I'm not gonna go through this, but here are some questions for you to have a go with your children at home. There are A, B, C, D, and you need to partition these numbers into the different parts like I've shown you in this video. So 328 could be 320 and eight. Have a go at this, pause the video here, have a go at a small task for you to try at home. And the final thing I want to say is thank you for watching this video. Um, this is an introduction to the year three and four curriculum to help your child get ahead and understand what they'll be doing when they go back to school in September. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe for more videos on primary education and hit the like button if you find the video helpful. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.